scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I began challenging us last week about a mystery that God showed me. You see, one of the one of the blessings of the apostolic office. In fact, it's not just a blessing, it is also the proof is that you are committed a certain dimension of spiritual reality. Aside from spiritual governance you are granted access to a dimension of spiritual reality and god allows you and mandates you to communicate that reality to the territory you have been assigned to. that if you sustain the humility to listen to any man that god has committed these two things happen to you number one illumination is granted unto you number two the capacity he says as many as received him even unto them that believed in his name he gave them the power to become when you believe it and you receive it then power is released to become that experience hallelujah and so i have taught us again that in this kingdom dominion is a product of our comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom this is what we call the word of god the word of god is many things but primarily a compendium of the thoughts of god comes from the word logos the logos of god the thoughts of a man carefully calculated thoughts an extension of that word word means the mindset of a man are we together now so when you study the word of god you are accessing the mindset of god the wisdom of god and the bible says let this mind philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 it says to permit this mind to be in you which was also in christ jesus there was an understanding there was a comprehension in the christ that granted him access to all of the possibilities that were produced and the Bible says that if that mind is in you, it can cause you, regardless of what limitation, to produce that result. Hallelujah. This Bible was given to us as a gift. Holy men, the Bible says, wrote as they were inspired of the Spirit. Now the Bible in itself, theologically speaking, still contains the imperfection of the writers and the imperfection of the interpreters and some of the errors that have happened as a result of translation from year to year you see obvious um limitations things that were added that should not be added and things that were not added that should be added but regardless of the limitation the word of god is still intact the word of God is not 66 books. No. 
66 books are the vehicles that are used to communicate the word of God. Are we together now? If all you have in your lifetime is one chapter of the Bible, you can access the word of God through it. It is not just in reading Genesis to Revelations that you access the word of God. That vastness is given as a symbol of God's mercy and grace so that regardless of how you come, what angle you come, you will still access the word of God. You have to understand what I'm saying. There are people who may never have the privilege of holding 66 books in their hands, yet they can have access to the word of God. The word of God is not the reading of the book, for there are different alterations to different Bible versions. I don't want to go into all those theological debates. There are many books that are, are argued whether it should be added to the book or not. And, and people argue as it will not... It will not change the word of God. The word of God is eternal. Are we together now? So it doesn't matter what error in interpretation. That's too small a reason to alter the word of God. The Bible says the word of God liveth and abideth forever. Liveth and abideth forever. Are we together now? When you encounter the Lord Jesus Christ at salvation... Scripture tells us that we are born of the word, born of the word, born of the word. But much more than being born of the word, the Holy Spirit, when he comes into the life of a believer, his primary assignment is to begin to open the truths of God's word. Jesus was speaking, John 15, John 16. He began to talk to us about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. When you read John 16 and verse 12, it was, it, was, it was said that when he comes, he will guide us. The Holy Spirit guides you. He is the spirit of truth. But he, he will guide you into all truth. He will coordinate your understanding to ensure that you are not in error. Hallelujah. Listen. The quality of my life and your life is dependent on the word of God. But not just the word of God alone. I shared it last week. Remember, our access to it first. Then our ability to engage the word. This word of God issue is a very serious issue. Two scriptures all said the same thing. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3. We are talking about a life and death issue, brothers and sisters. We are not talking about something that you can live without. It says, and he humbled them. Afterwards, go to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and all of that and all of that so that he might make you know that what? Man does not live by bread only, but by every word. How many? Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. That means both the quality and the quantity of your life, listen, is dependent on the word of God. When Jesus came, Give us Matthew chapter 4, please, and verse 4. Satan was attempting to tempt Jesus, and here was his reply. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. That means the cure for the death that happens in anyone's life, whether sickness destiny career is the cure is in the mouth the word of god the word of god you hear people talk about the word of god but many believers have not given the kind of attention that is required to produce the results they desire the word of god man so we are talking about an issue of life and death here that if a man in his lifetime does not access the word of God, he will die both spiritually and physically. The secret to the mysteries of God 
is in his word the secret to the multifaceted dimensions of God's possibilities is hidden in his word the secret to a life of wealth and prosperity is hidden in the word of God the secret for restoration just like the worship team beautifully sang the word of God the secret to breaking the bands of witchcraft and wickedness is hidden in the word of God but you see believers pay very little attention to the word of God and there is a reason for that it's not just that they do not want to pay attention to the word of God we preachers have not been able to demonstrate the potency of the word of God we will rather sit from morning till night in people's offices begging them than to stand and access the word of God we will rather bribe and do all kinds of things and cut corner it is because we have not been taught the potency of the word of God and its ability to change everything the word of God is reliable the word of God is dependable the word of God is worthy of your trust and your commitment please don't forget this the word of God is reliable the word of God is faithful it would deliver as promised if I ask you to see me tomorrow and I will buy you lunch the first thing you do is to gauge whether I am reliable whether I am trustable and whether or not I have the ability to be able to provide you lunch so when you think and say lunch uh, no matter what you should be able to afford it then you believe me is that true everything brothers and sisters declared by the word of God for your destiny is doable by the word the word of God is not a scam the word of God is not some fraud some trickster the word of God is not a religious system of indoctrination that just makes men identify with a deity so there are many of them and you choose the one that is most reliable no the Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away listen carefully heaven and earth will pass away it says but the word of God remains eternal I do not trust anything that is not built upon the word I don't care how solid it looks you are watching a mirage it will evaporate the vicissitudes of life will force it to move away are we together it says that he that heareth my sayings and doeth them I will liken to a man that built his house on a rock is the issue is not the house the issue is what it was built on brothers and sisters our lives are in a big risk because we are building our lives on visions we are building our life on emotions building our lives on uncle connection degrees building our lives on on lottery building our lives on business building our lives on money building our lives on intelligence that's a risk it's the same thing as sitting in a car and driving backward with your eyes closed how safe is that yet the risk we are taking by ignoring the word of god is worse than that and we do it every day for some it's been so all their life my assignment is to bring you to a point where you appreciate the invincibility of the word of god my assignment is to indoctrinate you to bring you to a point where you are you become one experientially with the word that your life is built upon the word brothers and sisters i give you a guarantee you will never fail i don't want to know what is happening in your life you will never fail hallelujah John chapter 1 and verse 1 the Bible says John in his gospel was teaching he said in the beginning when your uncle was not there listen carefully when the university was not there when no business idea was there when no seminar was there in the beginning 
when there was no customer in the beginning where there was no producer in the beginning where there was no lecturer it says in the beginning was the word the word is ancient in the beginning was the word and the word as a person was with God and the word himself was God verse 2 says that the same was in the beginning with God verse 3 it says how many things please talk to me how many things all things were made by now when the Bible tells you all things were made by the word you should pay attention because that means everything that is a vacuum in your life can be made by the word your finances can be made by the word it's not there the word is what will make it the ministry can be made by the word the home can be made by the word in the beginning was the word he said all things were made by him and without him ha, this is a revelation already was not anything made that was made that means if it ever appeared the word of god made it happen this for me is healing from every fear this is healing from every envy because the bible says nothing ever appears until the word of god births it brothers and sisters if you ever see a human being on earth the womb of a woman produced it it is not the womb and something else it is the womb alone even if machines are constructed it is in the similitude of the womb the womb is the authorized channel for reproducing another human being the word is the authorized channel for making things appear and without him all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made now listen the bible never said all things were made and will never be made again the creative potency of the word is still intact the word is still making destinies the word is still making wealthy people the word is still bringing people to the place of the anointing all things were made by him all things the bible says he upholds all things please listen he upholds all things by the word of his power he upholds all things by the word of his power the word of god is a matter of life and death the word of god is not the issue of christianity the word of god is not the issue of a preacher or a preacher's wife or a preacher's child listen the word of god there are many people business people who claim that they don't need to know anything about the world all they need is just idea and connection there are many students all they need is to be able to read and cram there are several people in life who have not yet seen the need for the word in their lives that you preach the word does not mean you have received it you are just being a nice man of god it doesn't mean you're a believer a believer is not one who preaches the word a believer is one who the word of god has entered him preaching the word does not mean you believe the word i know many people who say many things that are not their convictions including books that have been written first peter chapter 1 and verse 23 in his epistle peter is teaching us something first peter chapter 1 and verse 23 first peter help us media chapter 1 and verse 23 it says being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of god which does what liveth and abideth forever no uncle abides forever no system abides forever history and archaeology chronicles many kingdoms that have risen and fallen many systems of government that have risen and fallen but the bible says the word of god liveth and abideth forever the word of god is the only way to commit god to the affairs of your life the word of god is not one of the ways it is the only way an individual 
a believer can commit God to the affairs of his life you ignore the word of God you will pity yourself and just become emotional believing that God is in the affairs of your life many of we young men are trying to build our lives without the word of God with our pride and arrogance believing that we can believe we can build our lives many people are building homes without the word of god many people are building financial destinies without the word of god when you talk about the word of god they don't exactly refuse it they just they are passive about it they have not seen how to engage it god's word is a compendium of all the possibilities that are resident in god please write it down god's word is a compendium god's word is a compendium of all not some all the possibilities that are resident in god god's word is a compendium of all the possibilities that are resident in god There are many things that the word of god can do a number of them not all of them a number of them were chronicled in this bible the 66 books are a representation just a sample of what god can do the bible does not give the picture of all he can do with the stories the stories are finite the power of god is infinite meaning that if the bible were to be written continually there are more things that we will see about god the bible says many miracles jesus did which were not recorded in this scripture but this has been written because it is enough to make us believe hallelujah the bible is a compendium of all the possibilities in this bible impossible situations were turned around in this bible sick people were healed in this bible god took people from the dung hill in this bible farmers became prophets in this bible prostitutes became the great grandmothers of jesus in this bible god turned around families in this bible money failed and god turned the economic situation not of individuals of nations in this bible men lost things and received it back in this bible god stepped in miraculously in this bible angels fought for men so that when you see it you can have a, a consolation that the word of god is reliable are we together the word of god is dependable the word of god is trustable you can throw your life to it I believe the word of God with all my heart I will be foolish today to ever say I do not believe the word of God but the missing link for many people is that they do not know that the word of God does not work automatically let's walk this thing now this is where the foundation of many believers confusion comes somehow they believe that if the word of God is powerful and potent it should be able to work regardless of my impute that thing I believe with all my heart is a doctrine of demons the Bible says that the spirit speaketh expressly that in the end times many shall come and be deceived and they shall give heed to strange doctrines and that includes the doctrines of demons one of it is the misconception of the operation of the world this is what i want to drum into your spirit the operation of the world how the world works hallelujah the word of God does not work automatically it was Jesus himself that taught us in the parable that a man 
the man was good the seed which was the word of God was good the Bible says that he planted all kinds of seeds some fell by the wayside some on thorns is that true some on a rocky ground and some on good soil very good word accurate seed but there were some soils that made the word of God not to produce to the extent that birds were able to come and carry the seed they were not afraid they ate it listen to Jesus's own interpretation he said that the seeds that fell by the wayside are those that immediately they hear he says Satan comes Satan is not afraid of the word Satan is afraid of your understanding and you're engaging it don't you ever make a mistake of lying to yourself that just because you have the word of God the devil will run away have you forgotten that he was Lucifer the light bearer Satan was the custodian of the mysteries of God it was his office in heaven Satan does not fear the word brothers and sisters when Satan came to Jesus he used it is written good student of the word Satan is never ever your access to the word does not scare the devil it is your understanding and the capacity to release your faith to it that's what paralyzes the gates of hell that you have a word of healing does not mean you will be healed that you have a word of prosperity does not mean you will prosper that you have a word of prophecy over your life does not even mean that things will be all right is God helping us tonight please I beg you in the name of Jesus I want you to listen to me if you listen to what I'm teaching you I promise you for some of you it will be a matter of days you will watch things turn around in your life this thing works it's just that we are engaging it inaccurately that's why it's not producing the desired results the word of God does not work automatically no sir they had the word just like we did but the word did not profit them if you do not profit in business what happens to you you lose there's nothing like neutral so if the word of God does not profit a man it means on account of that word he can lose some things yes it is the word the correct word Jonah carried a word from God entered a boat with the word made people to lose everything with the word in him because the word was wrongly engaged the word was from Nineveh and he carried a correct word and ran against God and people suffered that you are holding the word of God and handling it wrongly may even be the reason why certain things are not going well huh. are we together if Moses never had an encounter with God he would have been spared but Moses saw certain dimensions of the word and God would not tolerate certain things from him and said no Moses your level of encounter with me should not allow this unbelief you are not entering the promised land period if he was blind he would have entered quietly the word does not work automatically many believers in the body of Christ this is what we have been taught the moment come doctor the moment you find the word believe it confess it go and sleep hey. listen I'm putting my hand on my head because it's worth lamenting I am I am a confessor of the word listen 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 this is a system go and buy rice buy fish buy oil drop everything hit your pot and go and sit down talk to me ladies that sounds to me like rice well prepared rice no sir while you are in the parlor keep rejoicing that your food is getting ready you are doing the right thing but after a very wrong approach are you seeing that now this is what many of us have done 
we just get a scripture in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says I shall lend to nations I will borrow that's correct but incomplete correct but incomplete the precepts of the kingdom is line upon line you don't jump steps and choose the one you like and say God let it cover the rest no sir you are having the readiness to judge disobedience only when your obedience is complete that means your obedience can be incomplete it is obedience but it is not complete are we together yeah. planes have crashed because the pilot did everything right and missed one or two steps have you seen people have accident because they just slept the, the car was going well the fuel but they missed a step and that led to a ghastly motor accident that took the lives of many listen to me nobody will build a destiny just by saying because i have seen the word of god and just jumped around it it won't work that way i want to show you tonight how to engage the word i started last week i want to show you the operation how does this thing work the bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise let me tell you something you see i love everybody but i don't listen to everybody i love everybody i am open to learn but i have cultured my understanding because there are certain predictable results i want to get i don't want to waste my time at random being in confidence today and then being confused over what i believed yesterday i want to coordinate my understanding to make sure that i attain something very tangible i've always shared it is like taking lectures everywhere will you be awarded a degree at the end of it today you go to medicine next tomorrow you just hop to faculty of arts and then next tomorrow you just go to pg block and just stand by the door and attend anything you are writing after many years you have been engaging randomly it is your constructive uh, engaging of knowledge that coordinates your understanding up along the path of a field this is how it is many of us are not in ignorance of what we want but we lack the requisite knowledge and we have not taken advantage of the grace that has been supplied or we have not understood the operation that will lead to that outcome this brief teaching tonight is going to be a mighty deliverance for many people you will see what we have been doing and why it looks like regardless of our prayers nothing is working and it will be a deliverance because if god does not come now you will continue till 2021 and it will not work because brothers and sisters god is moved with your tears but he acts based on his word he is touched by your tears he's called compassion but only the word of god compels him to action the darkness the hovering round of the spirit did not bring light wonderful sympathetic to that environment but until the word of God came, nothing changed. Hallelujah. Engaging the word of God. <clears throat> Scripture says that the entrance of thy word giveth light. Listen, the entrance of thy word giveth light and then it gives understanding to the simple. The entrance, not the reading not the recitation not the quoting not the watching the entrance there is an activity of the word when it enters into your spirit truly the bible says it can give light and then dependent on your state it can graduate from light to understanding are we together now that's what the bible says would happen to us and if we understand how the word of god works then it will be from one glory of fearful results to another. The laws of God. Listen to me. The laws of God are a representation of his love and his justice. You have to understand this. 
don't let the laws of God irritate you they are put there to guarantee predictability to your victory thank you James chapter 1 we are reading from verse 22 to 25 James chapter 1 Apostle James is teaching us now James chapter 1 but be ye doers of the word everyone say doers of the word and not hearers only then he says if you are a hearer only what are you doing to yourself deceiving yourselves to 25 for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty what is it called the law that liberates men the law of liberty that when you access it it can set you free from any bondage and continueth daring he not being a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work what will that man have this man whoever he is shall be blessed in his deed if something is happening to my results i must go back is that not how mechanics fix a car when you kick a car it should start one kick and everything should move but when you kick a car and engage the gears and they are not working the mechanic steps back and says okay let's array a number of problems that might be wrong maybe the gear system maybe the ignition maybe the battery and he begins to check and then later ah i see where the problem is and then he fixes it if he gets it right the car responds immediately if he gets it wrong that car can be grounded forever the problem is not the car it was designed to work there are times you need to change mechanic you just say thank you sir you have been struggling around this car for a very long time i appreciate your effort and then you go to someone who can help you understand this while he's fixing it you're just watching him and hoping he's right the most important thing is the result is the mechanic you are waiting for sometimes he will tell you go and outsource certain things and bring we will add it to this car and then it will work that's how your destiny is that's how your prosperity is that's how the increase of the anointing in your life is there are people who have been anointed all that they have learned is how the anointing comes they have never learned how it grows so they are at one level forever they are anointed but you never see growth everything in their life is at the same level for a very long time Is God speaking to us our family members every one of us we take the Bible and quote it and quote it and jump around and mock ourselves before situations and circumstances and hope we are right brothers and sisters let's sit down and examine this thing our, our results are showing that something is wrong I don't know about you but I'm a very honest person at least to myself when a thing is not working i don't lie that it's working i go back to the drawing board there's got to be a way i cry for the spirit of revelation there's got to be a way lord there is a way out there is a way out open down my eyes that i may behold wondrous things from out of thy law spirit of wisdom spirit of revelation you were you were authorized by god to guide me there is the truth somewhere and i begin to search like an archaeology boom the light comes when light comes then darkness goes and goes forever pray in one minute lord show me what i'm not doing right show me what i'm not doing right i take responsibility i would have been healed by now there is something i'm not getting i'm missing a step for sure what is closing the doors of favor over my life why does this sickness leave and come back 
why 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 do people help me today and hate me tomorrow why does the church rise today and go down tomorrow there is something i do not know why do i see the power of god move mightily in a meeting today and then tomorrow it's as if i was not the one who god used yesterday why do i preach powerfully today and then tomorrow i turn around and it's as if i'm barren of utterance what am i missing oh god show me these systems why did i enjoy strange favor in august and right now december is as though my heavens have closed what is what am i missing because the word of god lives and abides forever that means the result should be steady and predictable lord i'll not be ashamed when you reveal to me no no i humble myself i mean business with my destiny open my eyes to where i'm making the mistake open my eyes to the place where i'm missing it that's the place where satan has capitalized on my result let god be true and every man a liar let god be true and joshua selman a liar god cannot lie something about my not understanding his ways is responsible for where i am god cannot lie god cannot lie god does not lie there is something we do not understand that is authorizing darkness hallelujah look up in the bible the first demonstrators of the fact that a man can do motions but not as authorized and not receive results is cain and abel adam taught them the way to sacrifice is that true and for abel he was able to sacrifice according to pattern and the bible said that his sacrifice rose to heaven and for cain he just brought anything and thought it was just by the action and his sacrifice was rejected it was not about cain it was not about abel cain was a rebel you would see it in the later parts of his life he was not complying to the pattern that was given and abel innocently innocently and his sacrifice was received it's not about the tithe you have been carrying an envelope and standing with it and dropping an envelope that you dropped an envelope of 10 percent of your money does not mean your heavens were opened the understanding that sponsored what you have done is what gives life to the activity the activity you do is empowered by the life that comes through understanding it is not motions people package seats and drop they drop money they do all kinds of things they dance they jump around they confess they fast and pray and do everything there is no understanding listen in my opinion the worst man on earth is a madman not a dead man a madman followed by a blind man these are the two most dangerous states any human on earth can be when you're a madman you there is no possibility for your understanding to be fruitful number two when you are blind you are limited in many ways are we together that's why when jesus saw madmen read your bible every madman jesus saw he insisted until that person was healed why does the word of god seem to be important in our lives let me give you two reasons and then we may share a few things if god grants us grace why does the word of god seem important in our lives regardless of our supposed engaging it number one <laughs> Do 
Number one, we do not engage the word with understanding. The first reason why the word of God seems important is because we are engaging it based on our opinions or the opinion of a preacher proposed to us but not based on understanding. In all thy getting, get understanding. In all your sowing, sow with understanding. In all your praying, pray with understanding. In all your serving, serve with understanding. In all your dancing, dance with understanding. The Bible says whatever it is that you get, have an understanding of what you are doing. That's the first reason why the word of God seems important. The second reason is that the word of God is not engaged at all. The word of God may be believed. It may even be received, but it's not engaged. The word of God is not engaged at all. We leave the responsibility of engaging the word to God. And let me tell you where this mistake came from. It is in not knowing that the grace of God, like wisdom and like love, are multifaceted. Everybody say multifaceted. There are many attributes in the realm of the spirit that are multifaceted the bible talks about the height the depth of love like wisdom too the depth the height grace has dimensions are we together one dimension of grace is unmerited access particularly the grace that saves the grace that saves was so designed because there is nothing in ourselves and by our power we are able to do. So the system of receiving the grace that saves is to believe the report and confess the Lordship of Jesus. The moment you do that, the Bible says you are saved. For with the heart, this is how this operation works. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation this is soteria yes but this was in the context of salvation now listen carefully that's how that grace works now there is a dimension of grace that empowers you to do you do but the strength for doing is supplied by the spirit are we together now the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, I believe, and verse 20, it says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Above that, who are those who are doing the asking and the thinking? You. I'm doing the thinking, I'm doing the asking, but I am doing it according to an ability that is working in me in me jesus sent the 72 go you go and do the teaching but there is a grace that follows you these signs will follow you you move and then it follows you now the challenge is when we take the concept of the operation of saving grace and apply it to every area of our life and say for my finance all i do is to believe and speak and it settles it no sir it doesn't settle it Read your Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, to do and observe, do and observe, do and observe, all that is written. How many? All, all that is written. All. That if you do, not just hear, not just speak, do, according to all that the Lord commands not according to the way you want then it lists a number of promises that the Lord will set you on high above all the nations of the earth verse 2 it says and all these blessings will come upon you 
and overtake you then he begins to list them there is a doing listen when your doing is by human strength that's what we call works when your doing is by divine strength it's called partnership in any case there is a doing it is when your doing is based on the strength of the flesh that's what is called works of the law when your doing is based on the supply of the spirit and in obedience to God's command is called partnership it's what great men of God will call covenant the obedience that binds you and commits you to God please take out time to understand how this thing works once and for all so here's how it works come this is a promise by God Emeka I am going to make you exceedingly fruitful I am going to make you such an anointed man see from scripture this is my destiny for you this is God speaking now it is left for Emeka to understand what is going to be my approach he can say wow what a great destiny lord are you not powerful who am i weak human being like me when we arrive just let me know and he goes back that's exactly the kind of believer satan wants because he comes and says look look if god is mighty why does he need to be assisted you see how satan plays with our minds he said god he does not need your assistance and he indoctrinates us into irresponsibility and we step back and say lord i just confess and leave everything and god says no no right from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain but the word had to come and become flesh and did things on earth in order for salvation to come to fruition why didn't he sit down and speak and say after all the father had declared he came died was resurrected by the spirit of holiness the bible declares and today is seated at the right hand of the father a physical coronation was done to him although he was the word the lord said to my lord sit down this is where we have missed it either we are not engaging according to knowledge the Bible talks about having a lot of zeal but that their zeal is not according to knowledge or we are not engaging at all many of us are allowing God father this is how we pray look up father I pray help my life you see that kind of thing it looks like a very honest prayer just because you are crying father help my life look at my family Lord are you not looking at my father what is I'm reading that you are a merciful God what is all this nonsense oh God then you apologize and get back again okay Lord I'm, I'm serious what I'm trying to say is will you not step into my family and God says look there is an ordinance I bound myself by my own word are we together now and then our parents just sit down and say oh God have mercy on our finances lord there are demons disturbing us in this house which man of god will come and help us now eh you see that and we keep saying all these things and then we discuss and hope it will happen or a preacher says oh god increase my ministry i've been standing no members no workers people come and receive miracles and go i am a very sound man of god but there's no increase those groups of people will never receive any testimony I guarantee you if you are one of them I show you the way out this night because it will never change nothing changes until it is engaged if this gentleman is not a human being he stands here and remains here that's what Sir Isaac Newton taught us in mechanics is that true for this gentleman to move I must apply a force that is greater than where he's standing and it moves him is that true this is how your destiny stands and remains this is how your finances will stand and remain this is how witches and wizards will keep oppressing you that you got up in the night and just mumbled tongues for five minutes ah in jesus name i beg just go and then you just lazily put one coin on your message and go back to sleep and then after that you just get up and it doesn't bother you you couldn't sleep in the night but once it's morning we forget the things that are behind 
those kinds of people will never rise so how does the word how does God himself prescribe that we operate the word let me show you number one the first thing a believer has to do is not to search scripture the first thing is to believe that God is alive and he's mighty all this searching of the Bible is useless until there is a conviction in your heart he that cometh unto God Hebrews 11 and verse 6 he must believe that he exists when you are still doubting whether there is a God no matter what you search in the Bible is subjective you will doubt one day Paul said I know whom I have believed it's not the believing I know the person I believe and I am persuaded in his ability I am persuaded before you start searching scripture for your health for your finance for your life do you believe in the reality of God now this is where the ministry of the Holy Spirit comes because it is the Spirit of God that makes Jesus real to believers miracles do not make Jesus real listen to me the disciples saw many people rise from the dead have you seen congregations that see all kinds of miracles yet one of the greatest levels of unbelief can be resident within those believers peter went on evangelism he was part of those who returned but when he stood he doubted the disciples ran away So the first thing is an encounter, an encounter with God. The foundation for operating the word properly is a settled conviction about the fact that God is alive. And number two, that he is mighty and able. You have to settle that. Otherwise, your journey to exploring the word of God is a waste many religions teach all kinds of things about jesus christ and about god and even in the christian faith there are all kinds of disturbing variations and understandings about god there are people who believe that god is not really god he's just one of the many deities so they add him is an all-inclusive thought about god that god the name god is like a man with so many dimensions and Jesus is just one dimension of him and there are other dimensions if that's what you believe the word will not profit you you see that yes number two when your conviction is settled now listen carefully number two is that there must be a searching the Bible says for everyone that seeketh find it there must be a searching you don't sit passively and quote any scripture for anything all keys don't open any door there are specific keys for specific doors are we together now yes you cannot have a financial concern and you are applying a scripture of marriage except if the Holy Ghost opened your eyes to see a mystery there but you just stand oh and he was alone and you just quote it and say lord I, I i at least it's the bible bible is bible no sir no sir all this humanist point of view that keep punishing us you have to find the accurate word the key to your kitchen does not open your bedroom the key to your bedroom does not open your car the key to your car does not open the safe of a bank they all require keys but you must be able to piece together the scriptures that address the issues of concern and where you do not know those scriptures follow those who have conquered in that area they have conquered by the word you see how it is so this lady is walking for instance in tremendous dimensions of the anointing and i'm trusting god now i believe god wants to anoint me i'm tired of my church struggling sick people not being healed and i search around i'm in ignorance and i just find out okay the holy ghost shall come upon you lord i receive but nothing is working it means i have to explore it is for this reason that he gave unto some apostles 
and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers to help you and open up that mystery all you do is just read the Holy Ghost shall come upon you Lord I believe now the Holy Ghost is upon me and you get up you are seeing that nothing is working that's to tell you there is more than that thing you read every time the obvious does not produce result go prophetic immediately it means there is there is a deeper understanding every time the obvious doesn't produce the result you desire there must be a prophetic interpretation so I access her materials and I sit with the Holy Spirit and then I trust him to begin to open me up now listen 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 when you begin to study the Bible and meditate upon it you need time and you need concentration two things that we lack in this our distracted generation time and concentration you can't be cooking and trying to access revelation you quickly the food is hot on fire and you are wondering until it starts smelling as if you are burning and in the middle of something that is living heaven just about to get to you you run and then while you are trying to off the gas you return back you won't continue where you left you will start afresh again it's like worship when you finish worshiping and they take light you hope that they bring it fast if you don't bring that light after 30 minutes don't think they just bring it and you continue no somebody who was kneeling before just gets up and starts punching his phone time and concentration let me tell you this many believers are distracted it's a strategy of satan you are studying your bible and playing computer game satan yes sir satan i didn't say satan made the game satan created that system to distract you studying your bible and making a long call then what did you say i'm still on it no no sir no sir study great men how does god reveal these things to them when there was a need for revelation daniel said oh king don't worry just give us time daniel was not loitering around in the silence then the secret was revealed then the secret was revealed there are some of us who believe that because you are always around people it's a sign that you are a famous person let me advise you you may not be very great if your entire life is corporate you must understand the power of a private life are we together it's good to have a corporate fellowship it's good to be with your husband your wife your children but there are times listen certain realities in the spirit cannot come until you are alone even demons walk like that there are certain levels of oppression that will never happen till you are alone there are certain levels of encounters that never happen until you are alone i want you to learn this these things i'm teaching you are, are the ways god has opened me up to revelation you need conviction then you need to search out let me take one area that is very obvious for us let's talk about maybe the issue of wealth and prosperity for instance things are not working in your life things are not working in your family let me tell you what many of us say oh god i've been crying about this employment issue it won't you wipe my tears and give me a job be very honest is it a job that is going to solve your problem i'm not saying a job is bad but you need an understanding of the economic system of the kingdom not a job you don't make money off job you don't make money off business you make money off understanding are we together now yes and so the person just says well lord i thank you and then you believe that things will change or your health you are trusting god the devil is afflicting your body afflicting your body and you are happy here and there you just quote some scriptures in jesus name by his stripes i am healed and then that settles it you won't get healed that way i want you to study the bible i i got a very powerful revelation from bishop david Oetico that I, I mean it did something to my life in a way that i cannot begin to explain do you know that satan is very particular about two things sickness and poverty they are his master keys in keeping believers oppressed sickness and what poverty 
he doesn't mind you being brilliant that's all right if he struggles to hold you and you refuse he will let you be but your body and your finances he fought the body of moses he fought the well-being of israel in egypt listen to me these are the two areas that when you want to break free it's not just quoting scripture there will be warfare are you, are you, are you hear what i'm saying warfare that you want to walk in divine health whereas your entire lineage has a track record of sickness look at all the people who were healed in the bible they were not casual thou son of david have mercy was passing the woman with the issue of blood eh, madam please don't embarrass us you are, you, are, you are joking shouted until jesus responded the blind guy the pool of Siloam. what of the one that they tore a roof to bring him inside said we can negotiate with the owner of this house the same money that fixes the roof we spend 10 times it in the hospital when it comes to your health it's going to be more than recitation trust me it will be warfare because this body is what authorizes you to function on earth satan will fight it with cancer he will fight it with anything he can fight look at young people now having um what they call this thing blood pressure blood pressure last born and he has blood pressure everybody is taking care of him yet he still has high blood pressure are we together yes that's to tell you blood pressure is not a product of fatigue it's a demon it's a demon don't let anybody tell you it's because of stress doctors well done i love all of you but believe me just hear what i'm telling you it will not be just because of stress it's a spirit a wicked spirit from hell hell had enlarged itself releasing all kinds of strange demons I pray for people and I look at certain sicknesses I know that this has to be a demon praise the Lord they say you are sick but you find out that is when you are praying all kinds of objects you can't see it all but you are feeling it move from your leg to your stomach to your chest then it stops there and very soon they say ah you have a breast a, 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 a lump on your breast that devil is a liar that is a spirit it's not just some kind of i say you ate too much starch no sir no sir before we knew anything about nutrition people were dying in the bible every time they died and food killed them they said there was death in the pot they didn't say there was sickness it's the spirit of death do you know there are certain manifestations of poverty that appears as sickness you never get healed till your money finishes then by yourself you get healed you buy the highest level of panadol it won't go are we together you pray and fast it won't go the moment you backslide that headache just goes like that is that a sickness no sir is God speaking to us and then finance the demon of finance is even the worst one because I've seen that one myself let me tell you why it is bad it is Satan's deception in the body to believe that trusting to access the blessings of God is antagonistic to your spirituality and will alter your passion for God sir Poverty will keep you farer from God than a blessed life. Take it from me. When you stand and see an empty plate before you, you will be shocked to see that as holy as you are, you are thinking steal it. Are we together? You know, we don't tell ourselves the truth in church. We lie to ourselves. Is that true? Is that not what is making parents to push children you have to go and marry so 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 this guy is not born again no problem he has what can wipe our tears will you think like that if God has helped you please answer me no. what of those who still in the house of God do you think they were born thieves no the pressure that poverty brings how many churches have people stealing from offering 
as the accounting, the finance department. They write a check, a blank check. They quickly put their names there and pocket it. Poverty. The ladies that sleep with big men, do they sleep with poor men? Please answer me. How much does the poor man have? Is it not a big man somewhere that promises them that I will change your life? And you are there and your ends have not met. They, they, you, you don't know where dinner will come from. Yet we keep laughing and think it's not an issue. There are people now, some of you students, school is about to resume. And the truth is they don't know where the school fees will come from. So when you say let's pray, the person starts praying and later you find out that you've kept quiet by yourself. It's a spirit. How many men of God stop loving God and stop being serious? You can't sit down in a house where you have not paid the rent and you are fasting. Any knock on the door will distract you. No matter what God is saying. These are strategies of the enemy. Please, I, if all you think about poverty is just nice shoe, nice car, you are carnal. This thing is warfare. This is the destiny of the saints you are talking about. Bless you, darling. Are we together? How many graduates now? As soon as they graduate, they just say, Lord, I want to spend one year with you. And they just say, Daddy, I just decided to take one year for a retreat. And your father will say, come home. As if he wants to give you money. When you sit down, he will say, what did you say? Are you, are you an idiot? It was with my pension I was running your, your school. You are staying one year to see God. That means I'm not a Christian. You better go and look for work. Your uncle was talking the other day. And the Lord is telling you, consecrate one year to know me for the destiny I'm showing you. But pressure is coming from anywhere and you dare not say no. You find yourself in a profitless job and you are crying every day. You say, I want to leave. Society says, you better don't leave. Hunger will kill you. Hi. May God raise a generation of people that will access these things. You know, years ago, I listened to our father in the Lord, Bishop Oyedeko, and as he said these things passionately, people criticized him, they still do. And all those poor and broke people are the ones today that are making their congregations poor and angry. I don't want to sit down serving God thinking about money. Imagine if I was thinking about my daily bread. I now prophesy to you and say, Sam, see me after service. God just shows me that a wealthy newcomer has come. I say, Madam, especially see me, you, see me after service. There's something God said I should tell you. I can't say it in public. Hunger, whose God is their belly? It's a very serious issue. I know we are laughing. I'm very serious about it. Let me tell you, prosperity has contributed to my concentration and the anointing upon my life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can sit down, and spend time worshiping, bless your people, oh God. Not come and say you are joining the queue. Where's the envelope you are holding? You, you can imagine that kind of thing. So it's not every man of God you see doing these things that are bad. They have not understood how to engage. This is what I'm trying to bail you from. Are we together? Do you know how to command results? Or are you aware that results can be commanded? Do you know how to command it? Or are you aware? Brothers and sisters, if you find yourself in the valley of the shadow of death, do you know how to come out? Or do you hope you will come out? There are people playing gimmicks about the anointing with shock i watch the things that people do that they believe brings the anointing and they will not listen you see one of the things i've learned with satan is that you see pride and fear are power twins that satan brings to your life to disturb you on one side you are afraid but on another side there is tremendous arrogance so they will not learn when i find somebody who has an understanding in an area i don't i will not argue no matter what i don't understand about what he's saying i give his revelation a chance 
there are very broke people who will sit down and analyze every pastor listen to a message and say this is not correct look at the person talking are we together there are many people who have never prophesied they have never seen anything and they will tell you hear god alone don't listen to a man of god the person who is talking to you is talking and he wants you to listen to him yet he's telling you that you should not listen to a man of god nobody needs to prophesy to your life forget about just to do this and and for this cause many are weak there are many people just one prophetic word is what your destiny is waiting for but they can stay for 10 years they've done everything well but one thing is needful and they've missed it are we together don't criticize what you don't understand let your heart be open to say lord speak to me It is the doers of the word that commit God, not the hearers, not the readers, not the watchers, not the listeners, the practitioners of the word. This ministry by the grace of God Almighty is where it is by the grace of God, not because of the intelligence of a man. Joshua Selman is too small to produce this result. Rabbi, Nicodemus said we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do this this result is not in the realm of men no man can do this except God be with him let's review two areas for tonight is that all right let's review two areas of our lives two areas of our lives let me pick one our spiritual lives and then our finances let's pick these two areas how do we rise by the revelation of the word let's start with our spiritual life some of you think i'll start with money listen first your spiritual life hallelujah spiritual life <laughs> if i ask you how do we grow spiritually what are you going to tell me i read my bible and I pray every day. Question. Have you not been doing it? Have you been growing? <laughs> are we together? There are many liars in church. We just open the Bible in the morning and read anywhere. We are just come. Is the purpose of reading the Bible for many believers is to cure themselves from the guilt of not feeling spiritual. They just open any scripture. And Abraham did this then they open another one the Lord will perfect all that concerns you then they pray Lord I thank you today is blessed I speak to this day and then they come out and their lives are messed up and after many years they don't grow brothers and sisters that's not how we grow in the kingdom you never grow just by looking at a Bible and mumbling words take it from me no you don't grow that way not in the anointing not in the knowledge of God I want to show you how to grow because people can grow let me tell you the first key to growth write it down Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13 is called the law of encounter this is the first mystery that is responsible for growth in the kingdom Jeremiah chapter 29 please give it to us and verse 13 13 13 13 Jeremiah 29. Read it with me. One to read. Uh huh. Uh huh. The last three words, please. One to read. One more time. One more time. You see these three words? That is the separator of casual Christians and people who will find God. It says, and ye will seek me. Many are doing it. But you will only find me when you search for me with everything. Everything. Brothers and sisters, your motive and your hunger for God vetoes your fasting. It vetoes your prayer. It vetoes your study of Bible and your reading of books. There are many of those who wrote the Bible 
they work in Zondavan, they work in White Taker House, the publishing companies, but they are not born again. Printing the Bible and walking around it does not bring growth. There is a depth of hunger. Read your Bible. Everyone who found God in the Bible searched for him with everything. Not a casual pastoral search. Not a woman of God mama search. Uh -uh. Not a businessman theoretical search. Not an academician search. Ye shall seek me. Hear what David said. A man who was full of encounters as the deer pants after the water brooks reading the bible does not mean you pant after god it may just mean you are not yet employed so you are whiling away time until your letter arrives and you get busy brothers and sisters there is one thing i know if you must remain in the faith you need an encounter with god an encounter that is higher than business an encounter that is higher than money that is the only thing that has capacity to keep you if you don't have an encounter i promise you the busyness of ministry will make you go still are we together encounters there are pastors who are good readers of the bible excellent revelators of the word but there's no encounter and you find out they rise the moment ministry starts moving you see an an unbelievable deviation of convictions you did not encounter an encounter is the place of intimacy with god that is the place of pruning that is the place of dealing that is a place where your all is before him an encounter is not a place where men of God meet God. An encounter is where those who are desperate for him, they say, oh God, as a matter of life and death, that is the place where he washes you. That is the place where he builds you. You don't have an encounter, you will never grow spiritually. We can flatter ourselves. Listen, the appearance of the gifts of the spirit in your life is not necessarily proof of growth. There is a big deception sweeping the body of Christ. And thank God I walk in this thing so that you don't think that maybe I'm just talking. Listen, I can walk whether in the healing or the prophetic grace. The anointing on that office is not a reflection of my spiritual growth. It is the grace and empowerment that comes by reason of being called into that office. If that anointing comes on a handkerchief, it will produce the same result. Handkerchiefs don't have spiritual lives. Listen, that's why you can lay hands on someone during a service and he can pray for sick people and they will be healed. After 10 days, find out whether he will still do it again. It's gone. Because you have to dig your well and cultivate a healthy spiritual life impartation does not cover for encounters you can receive an impartation of grace and the moment you enter a meeting you see people jumping up and down or you and an, an, an impartation of the spirit of revelation and you begin to teach the bible do you know there are people who finish teaching the bible and afterwards when they enter the office they now start discussing and you're like this is is this thing? is it that these people don't believe what they say i've seen music artists that when you see them, service is going on, they are at the back of the church, gisting, taking sugar cane, eating biscuit. They now say, it's time for Elijah to come and minister. And then just cleans his mouth and comes. And after five minutes, you see people rolling on the floor. And you finish, you say, my God, Elijah, no, sir. No, sir. God does not judge you based on the gift in your office. It's based on how much you pursued him seekers of his presence you can study the bible out of competition to make sure that you are the first to bring certain dimensions you can study the bible out of just to make sure you have sermons i know pastors and that's wonderful i teach it too there are pastors that have a sermon for every topic all they keep doing when they are invited is to just flip what are we talking about now? Uh, 
the earth's head will flow together. Ah, I remember 2004, I preached a message like that. Just dust it, add A and B. Are we blessed? The starting point of your spiritual life is to trust God for a hunger that can last your lifetime. Hmm. I will give up ministry a thousand times. Some of you don't like what I'm saying because I said I'll talk about money too. You better listen to what I'm telling you because this is, this is what will make money not kill you. I want you to ask the Lord, he will tell you, there is nothing in this life nothing in this life that I cannot give God ask him there is nothing that is the measure of your love for God the measure of your love for God is not sung when you say you love this lady she says sir I've not eaten I say sorry they just called me at the police station you are a liar and a foolish gentleman because if it is true love it will cost you are we together the cost dimension i'm showing you how these things work spiritually what you see god do in my life today i submit to you is not just entirely a product of my prayer and fasting it's because god knows that anything he gives me is his own ah my own my anointing my ministry when did that happen? I'm showing you where we are missing it. Although we are still studying the Bible. How many pastors move around? Oh, my member, my choir, my this. And God says, all right, so you pay the bills. You, you, you decorate everything. You bring members by yourself. How many churches put pressure on their people? Go and bring five souls. Otherwise, you pastor will look at you and say, I saw three. Please 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 john wesley said set yourself on fire and the world will come and watch you born where the carcasses are brothers and sisters that's where the eagle will come there are people who have traveled from several cities and several places today because there is a fire the key is not to go and call them the key is to keep burning the key is not to go and call them the key is to keep burning my heart belongs to you my life belongs to you when i go to pray he is lord of my prayer i don't just go -da 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 -da, as if i'm a fool as if you are you are, you are chanting a, a charm i approach god like one who is totally dependent on him he is the lord of my prayer life many of us think that the power is in the dissipation of energy so when we do it and someone is watching you you are hoping they are bearing it on record that you are a prayer warrior no sir this is not how spiritual things work above the mercy seat below the cherubims there i will meet with you there is a meeting place and i i i'm desperate for you Hey, help that lady. And now I'm lost without you. This is how it works in the kingdom. And now. Listen, man of God, let me tell you why the anointing has been far from you. Because every time you think power, you think conference. You think of a plane flying you around. Every time you think God, you think honorarium. Every time you think God, you think man of God. You imagine yourself entering a meeting and everybody saying, this is apostle. And God says, you know way. You fast dry 100 days and God says, in spite of it, and ye shall seek me and only find me 
and any other dimension in me when you seek me with your heart you see the way pastors hold ministry they, are, they, they hold ministry as if if anybody ever preaches no why is not them please let them not take my church and they struggle and kill themselves koinonia belongs to him it's a privilege to leave this ministry you see that gone are the days when they preach encounters now everybody just preaches open the bible read and somebody just quotes a scripture oh uh, yeah the deep things of god and we bounce around like a debate and while we are doing it heaven is watching that's why there is no life in what we do listen let's return to the place of encounters ask anyone those of us who started in this ministry it was people and god alone at the back of a fence at the this is encounter encounter is not sitting down and no it is encounter that makes you to listen to a 30 minutes tape and finish it in three days because you will be offing it every moment there were people who would lock gone at the days when people lock themselves from morning till night now when people lock themselves to pray it is oh god give me a wife oh god give me a husband i'm not saying these things are wrong oh god give me this oh god i must graduate oh god i must get a job service what is all this nonsense and ye shall seek me please god is not a joker let me tell you if all of you does not seek him forget about it there are ladies seeking god only to prepare themselves for ministry no you won't find god that way if at any point you find yourself using god just know that you and the anointing you and glory you are far please hear what i'm telling you i i never started hold on i never started my walk with god knowing i will even be a preacher one one gentleman came here i think some months ago with documents from his ministry well articulated and he said he has been listening he wants to start a walk and he just came to take my blessings i said wonderful i believe god calls people but what have you done have you taken a... i looked at him and at once there is a there is the smell of the secret place it's an aura when you see people who are not those who have visited it is their habitation there is the aura it's not in the huskiness of your voice it's not it's not in the it's not in the preacher friendly tone no sir take all of me all of me lord you have my everything use all of me all of me lord take all of me take all of me take all of me all of me, use all of me. Hey. I lay my everything, take my everything, I release my everything, take my everything. Say, take all of me, all of me, Lord. Listen, I wrote this song in a secret place. I'm not a musician. This, this is what happens when you want to grow. Paul and Silas did not have Bible study conferences. But brothers and sisters, these men were seekers of God. There was a prophetess called Anna. The Bible says she stayed in the temple. Stayed in the temple. Since she was 24 for 60 years in the temple listen preachers we are the ones to blame first leave members alone we don't have any encounter ourselves we just come up and dress well that you are preaching right does not mean he's releasing life 
the life is from your secret place not the greek not the hebrew hear me the life is from your secret place he said the word is like a double-edged sword that sword that enters the spirits of men you can't fake it listen honestly speaking we are at a risk of a generation that does not know how to seek God we know how to preach we know how to sing we know how to produce albums we know how to write books but to seek his face where you are fasting not because you want power you are saying Lord show me more of you reveal yourself to me I remember those days in the night those of you in vet vet a uh, faculty of um, what they call it now vet there is a place one of the neglected places I would climb that place and go on top of the zinc in the night I will be there till morning crying and saying Lord I've created a place where no one can distract us reveal yourself I wasn't looking for power reveal yourself right now what happens in the church is just an is just a galore of talent galore of talent i am this i read this i know this i dress like this no sir that's why we have lost the power of god in the body of christ as we sing this song this night brothers and sisters rededicate your life rededication is not for sinners rededication is for those who mean business with god lord i rehand my life again take all of me all of me lord hey, use all of me all of me lord take all of me all of me lord i give all of me all of me lord listen the bible talked about a particular woman because that woman was involved in all kinds of bad past the bible says she came before god with her treasure a representation of our all let me show you how to get the heart of god other people were coming with all their we know that moses said this and he said this is not what i'm looking for but here comes a woman the bible says she came with sparking out pure nard one year's wages a representation of her heart and she knelt down before god the king poured it the bible says she broke it you can pour small and return small you can give god your heart and take finance you can give god finance and take relationship listen you are not the first to go to school please hear what i'm saying especially for we the young people don't let anyone fool you that working with god does not pay no you want to do business with god there is the price is death not morning devotion the price for encounter is death not eight hours prayers that's too small giving god eight hours of your time will not give him all of you you need to give him everything everything not eight hours you want to see the glory of god in your life and your meetings you can fast dry for 90 days you will not see anything you want to see demons crying out as you minister brothers and sisters is not running around to look for a man of god you a man cannot impart his secret place no sir impartation is only useful when you have set a foundation one of the most deceptive thing happening in the body of christ now is this craze for impartation people just write the names of five or ten men of god around that they think are anointed and divide seats like a business and hop from one location to the other 
touch me and then they snap i i i got impartation from this it's me please i got impartation for wealth apostle i got impartation for this prophet this give me your own then they gather it in their room and lie to themselves that they are walking in those anointings you are joking you think god is that cheap he said many are called though but few are chosen gone are the days when you will stay as a neighbor with someone like roommate and you hear people groaning and crying before god in the night now people snort their way till morning a pastor a preacher Oh God, anything that will take your presence from my life, may it not come, may it not come, may it not come, may it not come, may it not come. Ministry, I will give it up a thousand times. Money, marriage, children, a thousand, a million times. Listen, those of you here who God has called into ministry or you are going into ministry, please, let me give you a loving caution be careful be careful who you follow matters be careful there is a path there is a path that seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death you show you are a shepherd by demonstrating your hunger for god People follow your hunger, not your talk. While you are talking, people are watching you and they will find out, is it true that this person hungers after God? Brothers and sisters, I have met preachers in my life who preach what I call a boring message. But the presence of God that left them left me going back to cry and say, from whence cometh this man? Which depth? Where did this, what did this person touch? That's what happened to me when I went to Reinhard Bonke Crusade. I didn't go there to hear revelation. I was already preaching. I was already working in miracles. I went to hear a man who knew God. He talked about the Holy Spirit and he proved it. Let's return back to the secret place. Let's return back to retreats. It's a language we are not used to again learn to off your phone no please learn to source especially now that is december don't enter do you know why we end koinonia we have just one more service and we are done that one month break is not a time for people to go back to what they were doing before just go back and say ah, let me go and see old secondary school friends and loiter around and call it christmas holiday it's a time for some of the workers in the ministry who labor day and night to now go and lock themselves. I can't wait to finish the last service where I know that I have time. No more counseling. No more ministrations. And let me lock myself and cry and roll before the God of my salvation. Not looking for power for next year. Not looking for prophetic word for next year. I don't get the prophetic word by searching. I get the prophetic word by worshiping God and the visions he begins to open to me to the year and he tells me there are people who have come here now and as they are listening to me they are waiting to hear something a revelation oh Greek logos and then they write and carry it quickly and go to their fellowship gentlemen I shipped something from somewhere we will keep mocking ourselves with this thing you don't fake presence when you carry the presence of God, it is palpable. 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 Something happened. I don't know when, when, which of the days now it was. I was alone and someone came to see me. And I wasn't even out yet. The person just sat down. I went in. And all of a sudden, I came and saw the person shaking like a leaf. Shaking like a leaf. And I looked. I said, my God. Do you know why? Because you can make your house a habitation of angels all kinds of things happen there all kinds you don't just become spiritual when you fast the key the key please hear me the key to knowing God 
is death not prayer not bible study death a sacrifice of your all until you die the word of god now becomes alive in you until you die the prayer now releases power to you if you have not gone through that process of death the way to the throne is the cross you can't bypass the cross and just put a crown on your head and say i've gotten to the throne i wish i can go through this death for you it is one thing i know that you cannot pass through as a group listen to my message knowing god experientially there are some of us the orchestrations in our lives now are not caused by demons they are the constraints that god must subject you through to cause you to know him yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death until i walked there i never knew that i can fear no evil we live in a generation that binds everything we don't have discernment to know whether it is of god whether it is a furnace that god is purifying us because we are bankrupt spiritually a pastor just sits down and cannot discern what is happening to him anything you see that is not favorable to your senses you cast it and many of us have casted the realms from which power will come there are people who god will say all of you go for work gone are the days where people hear god like this and somebody says you oh, for you two years you are with me no work for you and everybody is lashing on you and criticizing you and saying this your stupid man of god has turned your head upside down and you feel that pain and it is in that pain you know something about god We don't have experiences that make us know God. We are full of theory. There is no scar in us that are testaments of encounter. You don't know God by theory. People are in a rush to go to, for ministry. Some of us, when God called us, He took His grace to push us so because we felt so unqualified in ourselves. We knew it was not the issue of intellect. Is God speaking to you? I remember those days when we traveled for crusade. It was not the boosting of a man of God's ego. People looked forward to encounters. Encounters with the power of God. Never embarrassed by our failures. Right now you see people keep their ego on the line and explain all kinds of things if someone prayed for the sick and he did he was not healed you may not see that person for the next three days not because the person is not because his tongue is ego it's a revelation that you must know more and the person will unlock himself lord there's got to be more but right now pastor lays hands on 90 people 90 people don't get healed and he says well at least we had a successful intellectually sound meeting will i ever be that kind of preacher Do you have time for God? I know you have a Bible. I know you pray, but do you have time for God? Show me the book where you record his voice. Show me the encounters. Show me the personal vigils that you do. Personal vigils, not group vigils where you dominate everything and pray everything. Alone. I remember one of our friends who was spending time with God, I would never forget. I came around Chapel of Redemption there. He was in the rain. It was raining, yet he was on the floor there. That rain started and finished on him. Right now, little discomfort, and we are angry. Nah, need to, no. I can't go to church. My shirt is not properly ironed. They wouldn't think I am a child. That's somebody who doesn't love God. The Holy Spirit is saying, lie down before me. I want to impart something. You turn, ah, this lady that I like, this other one who respects me. My son is here. My daughter is here. Death. That's why we fight. I am Apostle Joshua Selman, not Brother Joshua Selman. Fight. That's a sign that you are alive in yourself. Please, in one minute, if I'm unable to continue, no problem. I'd like you to be honest. I want us to repent this night let's take five minutes i don't know what position you will assume 
Worship just set the atmosphere for us with the cymbal. Play the strings. I want to hear that sound of the strings. I give you five minutes with your makeup. Please. I'd like you to cry your heart to Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I want you to be honest. Take all of me Use all of me Let his glory come upon you. Let an abanyanama say na na na. Say na ma sa na na ma la ni la ba. Lord, a fresh, a fresh, a fresh, a fresh. A fresh, a fresh, fresh encounters, fresh encounters. Leda ba se na na ma se na na le e da da she da da le da da le da da. Don't be ashamed of your tears. I lay it all down again To hear you say that I'm your friend You are my desire No one else will do For nothing else can take your place Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes To feel the warmth of your grace Help me find a way would you bring me back to you? Hey, hey, you're all I want. She na 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 ma se na 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 ma se na ni na na ma se na na bo so na 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 ni na na. She ne ma se na ma sa na na ni na na he na na he. Whether you receive the breakthrough or not, the breakthrough is there. Whether it will be featured in your life is a different thing altogether. Are we together now? Whether you have a car or not, there, there are still cars in, in a showroom now as we talk. Is that true? Whether you you have a house or not there are still houses empty and available so it's one thing for that reality to be available but it's another thing for that reality to become your experience are we together everything we so desire brothers and sisters is available in christ it's a reality in the realm of the spirit but there are systems in the kingdom that can capture that reality 
and make it your experience here and now that reality does not bless you for as long as it remains in the realm of the spirit your prayer and your desire is that the word becomes flesh so that it dwells among us then we can behold the glory for as long as it is still in the realm of the spirit it doesn't profit you what good is it if you keep having dreams and see yourself rising and then it never manifests open doors in the dreams close doors in your experience lifting in the spirit or whatever visions you're having but in the physical nothing seems to happen the bible says if thou wouldest believe you will think this is a very little expression if you will believe truly it says you will see my god that means i can stand here desiring a lot of things in my life and god is saying all those things that look far you can the word see here does not just mean view it uh -uh. it means capture it let it be your experience if you will believe believe and second chronicles chapter 20 and verse 20 guides us on the dimensions of believing second chronicles 2020 and here's what he says Jehoshaphat stood and said hear me O Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem two believings here the first belief notice is a big B believe in the Lord your God that's the first dimension of your believing believe in the Lord your God to believe in the Lord does not just mean to agree that he's alive mm -mm. to believe in the lord your god number one means to be convinced and convicted about who god really is and what he's able to do you don't just sit down and casually believe believe is a product of of a contemplation that happens in your spirit by the way let me advise you for a very long time we preachers have been telling people that believing just happens in your spirit believing must happen in your spirit your mind and your body the entire tripartite nature of man is involved in believing i guarantee you believe alone with your spirit you will never get anything your mind needs to get to that state too your body needs to participate it's a well-meaning teaching but it's not a complete teaching you believe God, spirit, soul, and body because your entire tripartite nature has a role to play in the manifestation of the promises of God for you. Believe in the Lord your God. Notice, it didn't say believe in Jesus. In fact, it didn't say believe in God. Believe in the Lord. When the Bible uses the word Lord, it's a very interesting expression because the, the word Lord there means is, is from the word adon it means master it means owner it means manipulator are we together yes believe in the lord your god get to a point by the spirit where you are convinced that he's not scamming you get to a point where you are convinced it's a point of unbendable persuasion that you believe that if God says he's going to change my family, truly he will. It's amazing how many action movies we act in church. You will think we really believe God, but we don't. Some of you as you are seated right now, if I ask you, do you believe God can change your life? You will say yes. Just because your head was nodding up and down doesn't mean you believe. Are we together now? It's a revelation. Man of God, do you believe in the anointing? Yes, I believe. But it's not true because it's not showing. The Bible says if you believe, you will see. That means if you are not seeing, there is something wrong with that believing. Are you getting what I'm saying? You have to find a way of believing this. Conviction. Conviction that the Spirit brings that you have gotten to a point of unbendable persuasion that everything God has said concerning my life now regardless of whether that experience listen you don't believe it when it manifests it should be obvious when it manifests you believe it to make it happen not because it has happened 
it is your faith that will transport that reality from the realm of the spirit i sit down and just tell you oh someone is going to shout for instance under the anointing that's a stupid thing what if it doesn't happen so what is the what what gives that audacity is suicidal for a man of god your, your reputation and your ministry is at stake you don't get up and just start speaking and saying things and talking nonsense i hope you know if it doesn't happen people will say you see this is how proud people end but there is a level of conviction conviction are we together now if i tell you sam to walk and come to me it is because you trust your legs are we together if i ask someone on a wheelchair to stand up and walk to me that person does not trust his legs yet because of the obvious situation so he won't stand up and he would try but if i ask you to come now you are not you don't have any experience with your legs that should disturb you you must get to that point of persuasion you see god is not a politician god was not voted into power it's not like there is somebody that supervises him in heaven he does not have a disciplinarian nobody rebukes him listen carefully we're talking about the god of the universe we're not talking about the god of christians we're talking about the god of all flesh god is not a christian he is the father of lights the owner it belongs to him God will not come on earth and go to the camp of Christians. The whole earth is his own. Whether you believe in him or not, you face the consequence of fighting the creator. But he is the God of all flesh. Has thou not heard? Has thou not seen? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't get tired. doesn't get weary. So when that God looks at you, with the same power of creation and says i want to change your life then we now sit down and say oh god that's exactly what my director told me and god said you have brought me in the same category with your director who is only 45 years old you know how old i am go and find out if age gives ability god still qualifies to be god even if it's just by age let's assume that the older you are the more powerful you are god is still god by that reference believe in the lord your god believe in the lord your god believe in the lord your god get to a point of persuasion and say lord based on my calculation it will take five years for my family to get this miracle but there's something i know about you that when you decide to rend the heavens and step over a man's situation one month becomes too much you see listen as you are hearing what i'm saying you are saying amen but something within me is saying you are not apostle don't make a fool out of yourself are we together now if a jimmy is a landlord of an estate and you are trusting god to save 30 million to buy a house and he looks at you and assuming you didn't know he was a landlord he just says kai i want to bless you and someone just whispers to you and say that's the landlord the awareness that is a landlord does something say ah sir good afternoon I, i'm not even because you are aware something just opened you up to the potentials in him that he can compress a 10 years journey in a moment this is the god i serve the bible says the word of god is quick shout quick not slow it may look slow until god decides to shake himself and say now let me lift kenny now let me lift this and you are surprised even you the benefactor there are sides to the equation of greatness no man can explain it's a mystery you just know i prayed i did this from a to b to c i don't know what happened there i just know that a finger manipulated this are we together believe in the lord many believers don't believe god many believers it has to be in this order believe in the lord your god 
Believe what about him? Believe that he is God. You can believe he's a deity. That's not the information required for your greatness. You can believe that he's not a man. Satan too is not a man. Many other spirits too are not men. So there's nothing special about believing that he's not a man. You must believe that he's the mighty God. And you must believe in his ability. I don't know how to make you see this. Look, let me tell you, when you focus on God and who he is and his might, you will turn back and see the possibility of your situation shrinking before him. And then you will be brought to a point where you will agree, Lord, you can change my life, I believe. Lord, you can wipe my tears. There are many faithless people just because they are holding their Bibles and speaking what is written there. They think they believe. No! It's a conviction. Lord, I trust you. Lord, I believe you. That's why he left us the word of God, to help us believe him. The word of God is a commitment from God to you. It's, it's, it's a manifesto. It's to give you room to vet him. That means if you have any fears as to why you should not believe him, he still leaves the word. Are we together? Believe in the Lord your God. By doing so, you shall be established. So he says, be convinced and convicted about who God is and what he's able to do. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 2 says, but I know whom I have believed. He says, I am persuaded that he is able I am persuaded that he is able. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says, For without faith it is impossible to please God. Listen, it says, For he that cometh to God, like you have come now, it says you must come believing that he exists, and then that he is a rewarder. Let me see how many of you came from far. If you came from far, let me see your hands. How many of you honestly had quite a stressful journey coming? Now, do you think, please drop your hands, thank you. Do you think that God will watch you live wherever you heard the, someone came from Ghana, someone came from Maiduguri. So within and outside this nation, people coming, there are many people connecting from around the world. Do you believe if you were God, will you sit on your throne and watch someone almost have an accident? And for 12 hours, come and sit down. Some of you have been here probably since 12 in the afternoon. Or 2 or 3. And then as God, you sit down. And then say, okay, share the grace. May God bless you. I don't know the God you gave your life to. But the one I gave my life to is a serious God. It's a very serious God. We are used to people playing games with our lives. God is not just a trustworthy God. He is too serious. That he gave his son to die. And then he will play games with your life? No, sir. He's a rewarder. He's a rewarder. Let me tell you something. You've heard me say it. If you ever find yourself coming here to Koinonia, that you arrive here safely, alone, is a sign that half of your challenges have gone. Um, now, uh, you would think I'm saying it just because I'm the man of God here. You decide to come here and see the attacks that will arise. Money that you are saving will disappear. All of a sudden, every to some of you, the morning to come, you are not even yet sure whether you will come. It's a spirit. Believe in the Lord your God. Believe in the Lord your God. Believe in the Lord your God. Sister, believe in the Lord your God. My brother, believe in the Lord your God. Concerning your admission, believe in the Lord your God. Concerning the baby, I know it's five years, but believe in the Lord your God. Believe. Concerning God, turning your life around. You need more than a job. You need breakthrough. You need favor. If you get a job of 50,000, you are still backward. Because you should have been working for the past 10 years. So now, the issue is not just a job of 50 or 100,000. That God, can you shift my, what would have been 
the backlog of the past shift my 10 years to enter my September and wait for me there that I can enter September and I, I, it will look as if September is 10 years put together one of the greatest ways breakthrough comes is the manipulation of time read your bible and see what god did with time when it was time to visit people he made the sun to stand still he made the sun to go backward are we together he did something to time when you lose time you have lost everything believe in the lord your god number two please let's go back to um, second chronicles he said believe in his prophets listen carefully his prophets here doesn't just mean someone that prophesies. His prophets here doesn't even mean someone who is not fake. That means someone who is real. That's not what he's talking about. He said, believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. To prosper means to do well. He says, believe his prophets his prophets are not just people who prophesy his prophets are not just real men of god <clears throat> listen carefully this is where we miss it you must learn this his prophets here are not just men who are doing the biddings of god it has nothing to do with maybe someone being real his prophets here means the person sent to you listen listen the bible um, come Sam come darling look at this I'm Elijah and I'm going to the house of a widow of Zarephath are we together don't you think on my way going I'm going to meet other people who have problems so I meet a gentleman who has problem and I just greet him how are you where is the house of the widow of Zarephath he's shaking me but doesn't receive anything because I'm not sent to him I'm a prophet I probably met other widows. Elijah probably met other widows lamenting and he said, Oh dear, you mean it? You mean this how your life is? Sorry, eh? And he kept going. The same way Jesus saw ten lepers. The same way Jesus would see people and touch one and stand up and go. There is a man sent to you. There is an anointing sent to you. Listen. I know that many people will not like me for what I'm telling you. Not every anointing can bless you. Generally speaking, by opening your heart, I mean at the anointing a portion to change your destiny. It's true. Hear what I'm telling you, and then God will bless you. There is an anointing a portion. There is a grace designated let me tell you happy are you the day you come into the environment where the anointing that was sent for you do you know let me tell you this and i tell you this honestly my heart is passionate when it has to do with blessing people but i have met people in my life that i just prayed for them just for praying sake but i knew in my spirit i wasn't sent to them of course you won't tell them so they don't feel bad but you know but i've seen others i could not even wait for them to share their challenges because i know i know the anointing sends to you so believe his prophets are we together there were many widows in zarephath elijah was looking for just one how prophet what of other women <clears throat> I love them I can pray I can intercede may God bless you do a B and C but I'm looking for a woman of Zarephath where is she finally you find her and his clear she's not even ready for you she's doing something else the prophet would have been angry to say I spent time to come here you don't even know what you are missing I'm on my way going but because he was sent he had to stay his assignment was to change her life when you find the anointing and the prophet that God has sent, 
over your life and your situation let me tell you you will watch that anointing rubbish your situation in the as if satan does not exist it's, it's not just this is where we have a little challenge with many believers who just say the most important thing is God yes you are right but you are wrong the most anointing is anointing what is there what is so special about this man of God this is what I'm teaching you now people are sent to people even the word of God is sent he sent his word like a messenger meaning until that word is sent you can stay there but when the word comes, like a messenger, angel Gabriel left other believers around earth and was directed to one person, Daniel. All that fight for 21 days in the heavenlies. He would have been angry to say, I'm going to someone else. Mm -mm. He said, Daniel, I am come to give you understanding. Are you the only one? I am come to give you understanding. Jesus is appearing by the road. Saul is on his way to Damascus. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says there were other people with Saul. God would have been fair enough to at least give them something. And then he isolates one person and discusses with the person. The rest just fall down and don't even know what threw them down. They just got up to clean themselves and say, Kai, now what is all this one now? Whereas one person has that encounter. sent 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 the word that changes my life sent i have had encounters with sent words and sent prophets and my god did my life change tonight let me tell you if you can believe this he said believe his prophets i know you are a businessman i know you are educated I know you are smart but there are many equations in this life that cannot be solved with pen and paper they are solved from the realm of the spirit it's only the result you receive here are we together now believe in his prophets so shall you prosper write this down please his prophet here is the vessel sent from him to you you must first acknowledge that this vessel is sent from God to you. And one of the ways that you can help yourself to believe the prophet God has sent to you is investigate the dealings of God with that man. Don't just believe for nothing. You have a right to investigate the dealings of God with that man. What is so special about this man? Why should I believe him? Why should I take the word that he's bringing seriously? Every true prophet of God has a track record of his dealings with God. Investigate the dealings of God. Study the track records of his results. I think it's unfair if you just yoke people to believe you just like that. No. Give them room to study the track records of your result and find out whether the results are worth your believing. How do you believe his prophets? Open up your spirit to receive both his grace and his instructions. Don't just receive the grace alone. Instructions. Many times believers miss it because we miss instructions very subtle instructions sometimes very ego stinging instructions like you were seated here now and then i just said everybody shout jesus you know i don't mean to embarrass your intelligence you don't sit on a seat and shout jesus you've been singing a song before you came here you there was jesus more than 10 times in that song you kept shouting jesus jesus lover of my soul and nothing happened and here you are sitting and a man is saying just shout jesus once if you don't have this revelation you can sit down and say please what is we are not children here what is all this nonsense he told naman go to jordan wash seven times J naman said me jordan there are clean rivers somewhere and a small girl said you are the one in trouble if you don't go and wash you can go back with your lepros
two scriptures and then we'll pray exodus chapter 14 and verse 31 and israel saw the great work which the lord did upon the egyptians he says and the people feared the lord and believed the lord and also what his servant moses god performs mighty things and creates that track record not just so that he alone will be believed God also wants the vessel he's using to be believed. The Bible says they feared the Lord. They believed the Lord and they believed his servant. They believed the Lord and they believed his servant. You believe the Lord, you don't believe his servant, you may not get any miracle. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, Look up, please. Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. That means I can talk to you without the cloud, but I keep that cloud as that evidence so that the people can trust that it is me you are talking to. I'm, I'm going that far because I don't just want the people to believe me alone. I want them to believe you too because their receiving is dependent on their, both their believing me, God, and their believing you, his servant. He says, and the Lord said, I come in a thick cloud. So sometimes when God does some of these signs and wonders, it's, it's not really just for him alone. When God does some of these things, oh, there's a lady here and someone is shouting. Another, you know what God is doing? He's using those things. It's, it's a similitude of the cloud to help you see. You can call somebody and say, who is grace or who is um, victory? And you can say, this is just guessing. I'm sure it's just guessing. But how do you guess that someone in this direction do you guess that one? God does some of these things sometimes purposely to just address the, the leftover of unbelief. Because you see, some of us are coming from different Christian experiences. Some of us have been, our minds have been messed up by all kinds of theology, all kinds of philosophies. Some of us have had bad experiences with all kinds of men of God, prophets and whatever. And chances are that when you come like this, usually you will just add the man of God to the list of all the people and hope that he's just a better version of them. And God says not so. And he uses these signs to speak to you that you are in Mount Zion. Are we together? It's amazing how a little miracle can just readjust your own belief immediately. Readjust your own belief while the devil is trying to lie to you. Can your life be changed all of a sudden? The, the power will touch the person near you. This is somebody you shook hands with, turn to your neighbor and say this and that. So you know that the person, uh, the person can be acting. It's a very difficult thing for believers to believe God. But I think it's even harder to believe a man of God. And people have all kinds of justifications as to why they shouldn't believe men of God. But regardless of what your justifications are, if you believe God and don't believe the vessel, you will be established but you will not prosper. Are we together? Your prosperity is what gives evidence to your establishment. You must believe one word from God can turn your life around one prophetic word can turn your life around all these strange spirits that oppress people they don't just go because they are told to go no it takes the anointing I was talking with one of the protocol uh, people when we were coming down here and I told him I was shaking my head and then I was talking to him and I said I am amazed driving down to come for the miracle service now. I said, I am amazed at how people in Africa and Nigeria trivialize success. I am shocked at how people 
um, believe that success is about luck. It's amazing how people can see a huge sacrifice and trivialize it and just make it look like I think these people are just fortunate. Is that true? I, I, these were my contemplations while I was coming. Listen, there's no result that happens in this kingdom by mistake. No. Including the testimony you are about to have. That gentleman from Ghana, he did not just press this thing and found my name. No, 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 no. The anointing that is sent with that word works day or night. Are we together now? There are many testimonies just like his, that gentleman. You see that now? Someone will tell you I was sitting and I had a dream. How about those who buy new phones, brand new phones, brand new phones, and then they open it and see koinonia messages inside? How do you explain that? A new phone, not new, uh, what do they call that thing? Not new memory card. I'm not talking about new memory card. A new phone that you bought it, tear rubber, you are the one who opened it. Then the first thing you see inside is a message that answers your question. Who, who now, who, how do you explain that? Listen, listen. We live in a world that is not natural. It only manifests the spiritual naturally. The, 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 the earlier you got this, the better. My brothers and my sisters, hear me. All that you see in this world is only a reflection. Say reflection. The real control room in this our world is the realm of the spirit. Whoever can ascend this three-dimensional realm has the advantage of victory. Nothing happens that is physical. Are we together? One of the reasons why many of us are seated here tonight, among the many miracles we desire is finance. Oh, Nigerians, finance. You want to talk a good news to any honest Nigerian right now? In this day and age, as we transit into the ember month, no matter, speak about their spiritual life, yes. Speak about their love for God, passion, new depths, but please don't ignore that other one. Just even if it's in passing, just say something about it. Finance. Many people want to see financial breakthrough. Many people are working and they are trusting God for breakthrough. And remember, the strange thing about finance, do you know why, listen, I'm not talking about money, we're going to pray shortly. Do you know why many believers are poor? Because in the kingdom, finance is warfare. Money is not just an instrument to live well, it's a weapon. See, listen. Oh dear, what's it? Ecclesiastes 7. Let me just talk a little. You was... Uh, I, I didn't plan to say this, but Ecclesiastes 7, verse 12. Let me show you something. May God give somebody deliverance right now. Read it, read it. One to read. For wisdom is a defense. Uh huh. And money is a defense. Just stop there. So we know from the word that both wisdom and money is a defense. Now look up. When the Bible says you have a weapon, what is a weapon? Something you use to both defend yourself. And you can use also for attack is that true if you give me a weapon like a shield i use it for defense and the bible says one of the many weapons money is one of them and the bible says those weapons are not carnal the word not carnal means they are not man-made but my brother, my sister, this thing is man-made. It was made by CBN. That means this is not what God is talking about. Because this is man-made. But the Bible says this weapon that he calls money is not carnal. He says it is mighty through God. That means there is a spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means this thing is only the body. The same way a human being is called currency anything that moves is a living thing and that means there is a spirit inside the body to move it you are only seeing the body where is the spirit that moves it that's why it can enter a house you didn't ask it to go and it will go out by itself 
it can enter your account and still go out because it's warfare the bible says believe is prophet there is something they can do that can do something to the many things including this This is what we chase all around because we think this is paper no this is not this is paper yes but there is a spirit behind it and this thing respects that spirit this is what you need to understand so the spirit can instruct it to leave you and it can leave no matter how hard working you are you can receive salary and all you have is part of this left and it can be instructed to leave you it will, you know it's going it's going out of your life it just touches your hand and disappears because the weapons prosperity is warfare it's not just about money to buy car and houses money is a defense it can defend the gospel it can defend a man and the bible says all those weapons they are not carnal So if you ever see this looking for anybody, Naira does not look for men. Something makes it come. I, please, are you getting what I'm saying? If you can understand this alone, at least even if you don't know how it comes, you already know that it doesn't come by itself. These are the mysteries that surround our kingdom. You ever see anybody prosperous in the kingdom? My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. This is a spiritual realm. You don't have to be a Christian to believe it. You just have to be alive. This is a spiritual realm. Animals know it. Plants know it's a spiritual realm. That's why you throw a seed in the ground and you cover it. You don't leave it open. You cover it. Because what happens there is none of your business. Now you just cover it and watch it happen. And it grows to become a tree that you cannot push down. A little seed. When you planted it, it had no roots. The Bible says, just like you do not know the way of the wind, nor how a woman, how a child is formed in the womb of her that is with child, you know, and all of that, so also you don't know the way of God. The Lord brought you here tonight because there are spiritual possibilities, listen, that are beyond the realm of the eyes. Are we together most times we believe only what we can see and understand and explain unfortunately in this kingdom there are things that you may not be able to explain when people come here to testify you see me sit quietly and I watch and many times I'm in shock as I watch the immutability of God's power in the lives of people the same way you are going to come up here to testify yes it's true what suddenly happens to you and then you have someone just call you and say we are sending you to us to get a job Hapa, my brothers and my sisters i've told you again and again that everybody who helps you has relatives too who i need whatever makes you to leave them and come to you is not normal that you are sitting and someone says i'm thinking of you who do you think you are no i want to help you i want to bless you you step into prepared blessings blessings that you are as sure he said master we have toiled all night and jesus looked at them you know how to fish by waiting in the night and allowing the fish to come and rest on your net then you quickly pull it in the morning that's how you were trained but let me show you another technology cast your net to the right side master but we only have left and right <clears throat> this one is not brain work now this one is not one plus one i told you one plus one plus god is equal to whatever he says the answer should be one plus one is two but one plus one plus God is not equal to two. It's not even equal to 10,000. 
is equal to any answer that God puts there. So one plus one can be equal infinity. God said so. Are we together now? I'm saying this to build your faith tonight so that you will believe that God is able to do anything at all. When you look at the way you got to hear about this ministry and the various ways the Holy Spirit worked with you till you came today, you should know already that there is a God in heaven. Are we together now? Brothers and sisters, I present to you this same God who can change your life, who will change your life. I'm saying this so that you don't just sit down and be clapping for others. Wow, this is how God has changed this lady's life. Wow, we are soon going to pray. You must have a desperation and say, Lord, I didn't come tonight to clap for anybody. I left my journey wherever. Lord, I know that you will visit me. And I hold on to the horns of the altar. While you are sitting, the devil is telling you, remember tomorrow by 12, your rent or embarrassment. Say, Satan, go away. I'm before the presence of God. Tomorrow is too far. God can. How many minutes does it take to do a transfer? I believe him yes I do I believe him I believe him I believe him I believe he can change my life in one minute I want you to just mention everything you are trusting God to do tonight go ahead Lord I believe you for this I believe you for that Those outside, whether you are standing by the wall, whether you are standing in any of the overflows, and those following online, release your faith. Don't be distracted. Any spirit that distracts you in this moment now is of the devil. It's a Luciferian spirit. Let your spirit and let your attention be open. Yes, Lord, I believe you. Mention it. Don't say it's too big. That's the devil. Too big compared to what? Pray, believers. Lord, I know you are able. You are able to take away this reproach from this family. Talk to Jesus. Even if you find yourself crying, just continue to speak. Lord, you are able. Change this situation. Turn my academics around. Lord, turn my finances around. Lord, I'm in a situation right now where only you, the God of heaven, can arise. Turn my ministry around. Lord, I'm confused. I don't even know where to go right now. I don't know whether to go to the left or to the right, but I receive grace. Pray. Are you praying? Kill unbelief as you are praying. Don't let the devil tell you you are wasting your time. God of heaven. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and by supplication, with thanksgiving. It says, make your request known. Don't assume it is known. Make your request known. Lord, I'm here tonight because I want you to turn the situation of my family around. Lord, there is a death sentence over my family, and you have to arise for me tonight. Lord, there is a death sentence over my life. Lord, I've been delayed 10 years of my life. I am backward 10 years. There has to be a way you restore me, oh God. Lord, I 
Lord, I'm trusting you for the fruit of the womb. The gentleman who came here, seven children lost, including twins. Lord, I'm trusting you to refire my spiritual life. Something has happened to the anointing upon my life. Something has happened to the glory upon my destiny. I'm here tonight, oh God, turn my life around. Turn my life around. Something has happened. The signs and wonders are no more like before. The revelation and the grace and the utterance is not like before. I'm here for a turnaround, oh God. My prayer life has died. I'm here for a reawakening. I no longer fast. I no longer pray. I don't know what has happened to me. I cry for help. One more prayer point Lord I believe you and I believe your servant I believe that anointing and I believe in its ability to turn my life around walk on any unbelief in my heart oh God and take it out tonight go ahead and pray every spirit of doubt every spirit of fear Isaiah 61 please participate in everything we are doing it's going to be a very fast one but let your spirit be open the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord the same Lord that you are instructed to believe hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he hath sent me to bind up the broken hearted now listen this is why he anointed me because there is an agenda but that that agenda cannot be achieved just by a well-meaning heart it takes more than sincerity to bind up a broken heart to proclaim liberty now i like this one to proclaim to declare that the time has come for you to walk free it says and the opening of prison my brothers and my sisters there can be men physically walking but they are in prison next verse Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those who mourn. It takes more than a handkerchief to comfort men. It takes the anointing. Verse 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Now this is the part I like, to give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. Hallelujah. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. So the end of it is for God to be glorified but not in the current state. No. So anything in your family make sure you carry your family along in this miracle service don't just stand alone to receive i've told you if you are blessed and your family members are not blessed you are not free you are not free at all if you are the only one who is alive and everybody is just dying like a chicken you are still not free are we together now thank you jesus christ let me give us one last prayer point 
Father, every desire I brought here tonight, I'm not walking back with it. Lift your voice and pray. Every. Let your faith rise as you pray. Shalakata barakato. Talato shabrahasikete malakata. Shakatakata barakata barakata barakos. Every desire. Visit me, O oh God, completely. The God who touches my spiritual life can touch my finances too. The God who touches my body can touch my womb too. Lord, I insist. I insist for completeness. comes upon your life right now then the Lord okay I want to pray a prayer now please be your brother's keeper whether you are inside or outside is because of what will happen when I pray the anointing will come and people will act out what I'm saying physically that's why I'm saying you should you should just hold them are we together now the Lord is asking me to release speed. Listen, speed is a very powerful thing. When that anointing comes, you will start running like Elijah. That's why I'm saying, hold them. Right now, I stretch my hands inside, outside, online, and I declare, Spirit of the living God, there are men and women here who have been delayed, and speed must come upon them. Right now, I declare at the count of three, one, two, three, receive that grace. I command speed, speed right now, speed, let the hand of God come upon you. The Bible says the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. I command speed, receive it, it's coming on you now. Some of you is coming on you for the sake of your family. It's not just you alone, it's coming on you for the sake of your family. Let the chains be broken. I release speed. Speed. In one month. In one month. I'm prophesying that in one month, what has not been done in five years, in one month, receive that grace. I energize your spirit, man. Speed. When speed comes upon a family, you will see it in the result. When speed comes upon your spiritual life, when speed comes upon your academics, 
I'm praying again. The angels that ride upon the chariots are bringing you speed. I release that grace. Let that anointing come upon you. Speed, speed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Speed. Shalakato sadakata. Sheketo kata shalakato ziata. now now listen fire in the spirit has many significance fire this fire is a mystery it was a reality borrowed from the realm of the spirit that we use here fire does not run away from any element fire is the only thing that all other elements must fit whether you put metal the metal will be hot wood will be burnt rubber will be melted there is nothing that stands fire other things can stand water but not fire are we together now he said he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire when the holy spirit listen is moving to break chains he moves as fire do you know why because fire destroys every other thing yet it is not destroyed it is not solid it is not liquid are we together it looks like gas but it's there you are seeing it you can't hold it you can't cage fire you can't lock it up it's not restrained by anything the holy ghost is going to move right now in this place as fire listen this fire i want you to bring those people out this fire you see will bring an end now believe me when i tell you this will bring an end to many captivities many captivities at the count of three i just want you to shout with me that word fire that word fire and many of you will be surprised in the name of jesus where sam there's a song in my spirit when we sing that song what's the name of that song blow 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 like a mighty wind am i correct you know what i'm talking about so you sing that song by the time we pray in the name of Jesus I'm stretching my hands right now Spirit of the Lord you seek to reveal yourself as fire that consuming fire no power and no spirit even spirits can be burnt by fire in the name of Jesus I declare that any operation that is not of God at the count of three by the mystery of the Holy Ghost as fire let there be deliverance let there be refining let there be the breaking of chains are you ready now one two three bring them out fire the mystery of fire
I declare any chain if there is anyone under the sound of my voice and any chain has held your destiny by the mystery of this fire I'm speaking by this apostolic and prophetic grace I decree and declare to the heavens at the count of three may that fire locate chains in this place now one two three chains be broken chains be broken chains be broken spirit of victory cover us with your wings Madam, please clear the way for me. These women, tap these women for me. One, two, and the other person, three. Please come. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. You are welcome. Your first time here? I came here last week. Okay, you were here last week and you too. Um, is this the is this the mama I asked to come? I think it's someone else I saw, but when you are here, we'll honor you. But I want to pray for you. Madam, look at me. I'm seeing witchcraft in your life and your family. Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? You are coming from Abuja. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, man. Look at me. I know you believe in the power of God. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring to end every oppression of darkness. Mama, I decree and declare, in one month, your life will turn around it to surprise you. In one month. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where is that man that came from my Duguri? The one who came to give a testimony. Mama, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying I should tell you that the oppression is over. Look, I'm seeing fire. He's leaving my hands. And is coming upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, where is that man? We have to hurry up. There's, there's a lot to do. In the name of Jesus Christ, Mama, I decree and declare over your life. That fire. The Lord, it looks like you are an elderly woman. But the Lord is going to use you mightily. What you are receiving now is not just a miracle yet. You are receiving an impartation. You will begin to know the Holy Spirit in a very intimate way. Hold my hand. Spirit of the living God, you seek to use this dear mother. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will know the Holy Spirit in supernatural ways. His fire will come upon your life and he will use you in a very mighty way. In the name of Jesus, come. You are the man that came from Eduguri. What is this? CV and your CV. You are trusting God for a job. And who is this? Hold it. Do you believe that if I pray for you, you are returning with a job? You believe that? Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, I release the anointing upon you and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let there be that miracle. You go and return with your job, sir. Let me pray for you, man. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you and I declare that the oppression of darkness comes to an end. A complete end over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray right now, but let me just... Um, the Lord is showing me, okay, 
sometimes this time, time, time just affects you. But I'm praying right now and I'm seeing letters and I'm seeing on the letter congratulations. Listen, and I'm seeing that this is a symbolism of breakthrough. Listen, let me tell you, except God is not God. If this anointing that I'm seeing touches you, then you and your family must stand here and testify. I'm stretching my hands right now. Lord, you are showing me this. In the name of Jesus, this is a symbol of breakthrough. I stretch my hands. Every family and every person that must receive of this grace, I'm stretching my hands now. You must testify. I release upon you that grace. You must testify. I declare whatever it will translate to, whether a job, whether increase, whether promotion, I command it, I declare it, I decree it. In the name of Jesus, I command it, I decree it, I declare it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. hold the hands of this lady this one hold the hands of this lady in the name of Jesus Christ I stretch my hands right now and I declare it's time for your family to rise I'm speaking it by the spirit of prophecy and I decree and declare every embargo that holds on to that family I command that is gone now in the name of Jesus it is gone I curse the power of witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ stretch your hands towards me your hand is a symbol of your productivity and there are many of you there is no grace on the works of your hands I look and in the spirit I don't see the blessing of the Lord working that's what is responsible for hardship it's not like you are not employed or you are not doing this but in the name of Jesus I stand representing the Spirit of God and I stretch my hands back to you I'm declaring still that ministry of fire many of you will be surprised whatever it is you are involved in God is about to bring grace upon it I stretch my hands right now at the count of three may the fire of God come through your hands into your life Lord I pray in the name of Jesus, whatever has not been working in your life, I force it to work right now. Receive that anointing. I force it to work now. Inside, outside, I force it to work now. Those following online, I pray and I speak whatever it is that you are doing. I declare the blessing. I activate the blessing upon the work of your hand. I take away hardship from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I take away hardship from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is opening the eyes of people into where your blessing is. I'm seeing fire, still this fire thing coming on the eyes of people physically you will feel fire burning and ideas the lord is birthing things is is a birthing in the spirit i release that grace right now in the name of jesus lord all those who must see show them oh god where their blessings are stationed so that they stop dilly-dallying around life i decree and declare receive that grace the grace of an open eye the grace of an open vision may the Lord show you where the resources of your destiny is may the Lord show you where your helpers are 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This, the prayer is for everybody, eh? But this particular prayer now is for ladies. The Lord is showing me destinies that must be changed. Outwardly, you are beautiful, you are good looking, you are virtuous, you are wonderful. But in the realm of the spirit, it's not what we are seeing physically that we are seeing in, this, in the realm of the spirit. A man with an ugly situation sat down at a gate called beautiful. The gate was beautiful, but the man's life was nonsense. There are many people you can stand. I'm, I'm saying everybody, but this is ex specifically for our sisters. And it's not just the issue of marriage. I'm not talking about marriage alone. That there is a fragrance, a presence that can ooze from you and bring favor to your life. But many of you physically, they look at you and you look like you are beautiful, you are this, you are that. But in the realm of the spirit, there are powers sitting on people's destiny. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. I want to pray for you. That, that force, that veil must be torn. In the name of Jesus, ah, I'm seeing a strange grace that is coming on many people, especially our sisters. I declare any wrong identity that you are given in the realm of the spirit that is not a reflection of your true identity, any exchange that has been made in the realm of the spirit so that physically you should be blessed but in the realm of the spirit you are carrying another person's destiny right now by the fire of the holy ghost sisters may that anointing come upon you now may that grace come upon you now i declare anyone's destiny here that has been changed and switched and manipulated in the realm of the spirit so that what you look like is not a reflection of what your destiny is i change it now in the name of jesus i change it now in the name of jesus listen a man's destiny can be exchanged it's true have you not read in the Bible where kings slaughtered their children to prolong their own lives? A man's destiny can be a shadow of something else. You know you are alive, but this is not your life. You know that you are living another person's script. I'm saying it again. In the name that is above all names. Sir, come. I don't know you, but I want to pray for you, sir. God is going to turn your life around. And you see this prayer that I'm saying generally, this prayer, sir, is for you. You are a shadow of your life. Of your Is your dad? Where did he come from? From high there. From where? High there. From high in there. Daddy, I'm going to pray for you. This is not just about your leg. Huh? This is about your destiny. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, sir. Father in the name of jesus christ i declare in the name of jesus Anyone who has exchanged your destiny, sir, I decree and declare a restoration now. You are the daughter, hold my hands, I pray for you. Look at me. You are a wonderful lady, huh? But bad things continue to happen in your life, huh? You are a nice lady. Are you married? I'm married already. Don't worry. I know why I'm saying. You get what I'm saying now? Yes, sir. Because what I'm seeing, this is a spirit. 
You are a nice lady, but people continue to misunderstand you. Yes, sir. Yes, Good sir. things and people look at you. In the eye of many people now, you are, you are a devil. You are a terrible lady, yes, but it's sir. not true. Yes, you have a very beautiful heart. This is what happens when... Do you know that there are spirits that make sure you are misrepresented in the eyes of people? A ministry can be under this captivity. No matter... The Bible said, don't let your good be evil spoken of. You can be nice to somebody like it's happening to many of you and people end up fighting you. You bought something for them and they end up, you are saying, what is this? I pray for you and the person says, so you are trying to say I'm the one who is not spiritual. It's a spirit. My dear, I want to pray for you. Huh? This thing is not just about your marriage that is, you know, things have gone wrong. You are a wonderful lady. Huh? favor will come close to you but then never enter your life yes, sir. what yes, do you sir. do I'm working in a security uh, you are a security yes, sir. did you go to school yes sir I'm running my masters you are running your masters yes, sir. my dear do you believe God can change your life yes, now sir. I believe sir hold my hands to appoint unto them. You see that? To appoint. This one is a prophet's reward. It's not just that God is saying do this. There is something in the spirit called a prophet's reward. The possibilities that accompany an office, I declare in the name of the God of heaven whom I represent, may your life change this night in a way that will surprise you. Listen. I lift you from this security work you are doing and I put you in a position that befits your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Daddy, sir, I'm praying for your daughter and your presence. This lady will come here and give a testimony that even you as a father will say this one is the Lord's doing. Are we together now? I declare it, I decree it done right now. Hear me. I don't care whether you are working or not. If you are not in the rightful place as ordained by God, I want to pray a very serious prayer because there are people, the work you are doing is a nonsense work. That work is, it has robbed your spiritual life. It has destroyed your relationship. Because of that work, no man can see you to marry you. Demonic work that closes you everywhere. I decree and declare, I stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace. If you are in a place that is not your assigned place of destiny. I take you out of that place and I shift you to the place of destiny. I shift you. I shift you in the spirit. I shift you by prophecy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. If the widow of Zarephath was not where the prophet met her, that's how her miracle would have gone. It matters that you are in the right place at the time God sends your miracle. Some of these things in the name of employment, they are traps of the devil. I'm not saying it's not good to work, don't get me wrong. But many of them are traps from the peace of hell. There are people whose spiritual lives have gone down from heaven to earth. Simply in the name of job. Are we together? Nonsense job that on Sunday you're on your way going to church, your boss calls you and says you must come and resume. What shall it profit a man if you gain the... What is it? Is that the whole world? How much is the salary? Lose your soul for peanuts. I declare again, in the name of Jesus, may my God relocate someone here by the power of the Holy Spirit. May my God relocate a destiny, relocate a family. If you are not in your assigned place, I shift you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know, listen, we are going to pray for the sick shortly. There are people that if the devil wants to destroy them, he will make sure they get visa. Ah, Pastor Jay, it's good to see you. There are people that the devil wants to destroy them. They will get visa to UK. They think it's breakthrough, but they have gone away from their place of destiny. God spoke to Jonah. Go to Nineveh. Jonah entered a boat 
on his way to Tarsus. And because of that wrong journey, people lost their properties. People lost. He entered a boat and made people to start destroying their lives. They were almost dying because a man was not in sync with seasons. Let me tell you this. It matters that God meets you at the place where your blessing is waiting for you. The devil can relocate people and, and destroy your life. There are many Nigerians outside this country whose destiny is ordained by God to be in this country. You see them roaming around like armed robbers around the world in the name of abroad. And there are others whose destinies are abroad and the devil will make sure that he will peg them somewhere. And Isaac sowed in that land. It's not just that he sowed. The place he sowed matters. Isaac sowed in that land. Abraham, take now thy son and go. Go to a location. That's where I will meet with you. God is everywhere. But destiny does not meet with men everywhere. You must have the discernment to understand your season of visitation. I repeat this. You see me speaking like this. I'm speaking by the Spirit. There are some of you, it's an instruction from God to you. Don't be careless about your life. Look at how many Nigerians, you go to embassies and see Nigerians, they want to go abroad by fire, by force. Ask them why. They will say greener pastures. I've told you, greener pastures is not in any physical location on earth. Greener pastures is in the world. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything? Not when you went. Jesus instructed them and said, Do not go. Go only to the lost tribe of Israel. Don't go outside that camp. Because salvation was for the Jews first. If they went to the Gentiles, they would have received a root shock. Direction. Direction. Please, in one minute before we pray for the sick, lift your voice and say, Lord, direct me. He said, The Lord is my shepherd. Direct me. There is a way that seemed right unto a man, unto a woman, unto a family. Direction. Your blessing is not just generically in US or UK. There are people suffering in every nation. It takes the leadership of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, two things we are going to do very quickly. And I know you have been doing this, but please, I want to plead with you to do it with understanding. Most times we do things in this kingdom without understanding. That's why we are not blessed. Are we together? We are going to pray for the sick now. Don't walk out here if you expect to walk back the same way. Come here convincing, knowing that God is going to touch you. And while we are doing that, um, your prayer, if you don't have your prayer request, please write it quickly. Write it quickly. And in case your faith, you came here with a faith that is weak, you did write some vital things, you can add it quickly. Those online, you can send it you can send your prayer request very quickly. Now, we are going to do this very fast because our time is gone. Thank God Pastor Jax is here. Are we together? Now, overflow. Listen, let's not be rowdy. Overflow one outside will walk to your projector stand. Overflow two, you also walk to your projector stand. Overflow three, walk to your projector stand those who are in here you are trusting god to touch you to touch your family members you can make your way and come and stand orderly in front here now please quickly quickly let's do that very quickly while we are doing that please if you have written your prayer request i want you to wave it and ushers you may find a way of splitting yourself very quickly let's let's have ushers if the ushers are not in your pr department you can join them and then let's make it very fast. Make sure everyone's request 
um, is obtained, please, for those online, I want you to believe by faith. If you are still here to write, just write it. Ushers, please. There are hands all around. Let's help out. Protocol can also help so that we'll make sure that everyone's request. If it's a text on your phone and you don't have the opportunity to write it down while I'm praying, you can just connect with it. It's not just a ritual. Believe in what we're doing. the name of Jesus we stand by this corporate grace and this corporate anointing Pastor Jax Ejimi there um, Pastor Alpha Benga Overflow 1 Pastor Femi Promise Overflow 2 please quickly quickly let's go there and let's trust God to touch the people God has anointed this ministry and he has given us the grace to be the extension of the hand of Jesus over your life. And I want you to agree. I want you to believe. The worship team will lead us in a moment of praise and worship while we pray. And please listen. Except the people are prophesying to you or they are talking to you, just a touch. I want you to believe by faith. Are we together? You don't have to start giving them an explanation. This is why I'm here. Don't worry. Just connect by faith. If there is a word for you, the word will be given to you. Otherwise, just believe by faith. Father, we thank you. You call this place Koinonia and this meeting a miracle service. Lord, we pray for those online and those within. We decree and declare. Let there be a free flow of the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Lord, let this touch not just be the touch of men. Let it be the touch of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let every one of these people come and testify here. In the name of Jesus. Now, those of you who, when you submit your prayer request, don't just be staring. This is not a cinema. You should be praying. Are we together? Because shortly after this, I will pray on this and I will speak over our lives. Prophecy is very powerful. So whilst you are standing there, whether you are, you know, up here or down, you should be prayerful, spiritualize your mentality. Now is not the time to laugh around and be talking carelessly. Let your spirit be alive. Hallelujah. God bless you. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be healed right now.
Father, let your people return with testimonies. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let impossible situations be turned around by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Lord, it is before you these prayers are laid out. Father, we give you praise. Thank you because whatsoever we ask in your name, that you will do. Thank you for prayers. 
Thank you for answers. Thank you for praises. Thank you for testimonies that abound. Father, we give you praise for there is nothing impossible with you. We give you glory because we know situations that have stood hitherto unbeatable. Lord, you will bend things tonight in the name of Jesus. You will change things tonight in the name of Jesus. You will bring breakthroughs by the power of your spirit. You bring healings. You bring deliverance. You will bring breakthrough, financial breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. You bring changes, Lord, deaths, supernatural deaths we cancel by the power of your spirit. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. Father, we thank you. Thank you for angels, the release of angels. Angels on assignment. Angels bringing solutions and answers to prayers. Father, we give you praise because many will stand before you to give testimony and give glory to your name. For in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It has been declared in the name of Jesus every request here. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, we turn it into testimonies. Yeah. And let some of them begin to manifest from this night. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let it be by the grace of God that by this time next month, you will, you will almost not have any request to write. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our time is gone, but I want you to lift your hands. I want to speak over your life now. Apostle, why do we do this all the time? Because this is how you program the destinies of people. These words you see, they are not just languages. It's not just the speaking. You know, I never cease to be amazed at how people's lives change overnight just because a word the bible says he sent a word to jacob not he spoke he sent a word to jacob and it lighted upon israel hallelujah and he blessed them saying and he blessed them not thinking saying in the name of jesus i decree and i declare that this month of September you are entering, let it be called your season of strange results. Let it be called your season of strange results. Anyone who has despised the grace of God upon your life, in the name of Jesus, may God use your life to prove a point. I decree and declare over your spiritual life a new vista of insight and access into the mysteries of the spirit I release it upon you right now if you are a man of God here I pray may your ministry shift to a new dimension if you are a woman of God here I pray may your ministry enter a new dimension of power I declare that someone here may you encounter the power of God raw, the raw power of God the same way God comes to man may his power come to you may you know the mysteries of the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life this is a family of great favor I declare if this grace is not yet speaking in your life I declare by the hand of God Almighty who brought that anointing upon my life and this house may favor practical favor begin to follow you from today in the name of Jesus Christ what you cannot do for yourself I ask my God to do it for you in this season If you're a man of God here, I prophesy to you that the next time you stand upon this altar to dispense the word of God, may you see a dimension of the spirit through your life and your ministry that will surprise you. I know that there are many of us that are trusting God for all kinds of financial breakthrough. I've taught you the principles of finances, but there is a prophetic dimension of wealth. 
are we together now and now in the name of Jesus I declare the same grace that carried a raven and it brought bread to Elijah I decree and declare may that same grace carry your blessings and locate you with it in this season in the name of Jesus I pray for every family represented here in the name of Jesus and I say this from the depth of my heart enough is enough I prophesy it again enough is enough whatever represents setbacks in any family I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I command that an end comes to it this night every graduate here that is trusting God for a job you had the testimony here in the name of Jesus Christ both where you applied and where you didn't apply may the angel of the Lord see to it that a miracle job locates you those who are in business here in the name of Jesus business is spiritual the grace that will cause your business to command strange results may that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ if there is anyone here in any kind of trouble that needs the hand of God that means if God does not step in for you you know you are in trouble I stand by the gift of prophecy and I decree and declare over your life come out of that trouble now whether it's a financial trouble whether it's whatever come out of it now in the name of Jesus Christ every attack on your destiny I decree and declare from tonight by the assignment of angels we ward off that attack in Jesus name whoever has been destined by God to help you rise and either because of witchcraft or insensitivity in the spirit he has not been able to locate you in the name of Jesus I declare I call them by the spirit and I command that they locate you <laughs> believe in every prayer that we're praying we're entering the ember months and many people associate this month with all kinds of demonic activity minus you <laughs> I say it again minus you everyone who is part of this prophetic family and connected to this family I declare the mystery of exemption over you in the name of Jesus Christ that when men say there is a casting down I welcome you into the greatest months that you have to face for this year I decree and I declare over your life we're rounding up there are some of you nothing ever works in your life it's not like you are lazy it just doesn't work except it fails you to the point that even when you see success you are afraid of it because you know it will not last I declare not only will you be successful I command your results to last I say it again by the Spirit I command your results to last I forbid you from this experience of up today and down tomorrow in the name of Jesus Christ any door that was once open and is now closed I reopen it in Jesus name I hope you believe everything I'm saying please believe it with all your heart I pray for every student here I don't know what challenge you may be having or I don't know what you are trusting God for in the name of Jesus I pray particularly for students that are supposed to have graduated and one thing or the other is keeping them I don't care what needs to be done let it be done to move you in the name of Jesus Christ I say it again let it be done to move you
there are some of our young ones that just wrote post ume in the name of jesus there are some of you who the results you have seen now from that result you will not get anything serious i change that result now i change that result now i change that result now believe it you are too young to walk in unbelief i change that result now anyone assigned here program that you must die or that your loved ones as we enter this ember whether by accident as you are moving listen no but enter it i say it again if that fake cool is doomed for accident then i take you out of it but in the name of jesus if you enter it then it must not crash especially for you my dear brothers it takes a lot for a young man to be established and it's not a blessing if you are just going old and old and old and you have to beg for tea and bread every day in the name of jesus the grace that helps men that can take a man from nowhere and establish him because you have believed the lord i command your establishment now Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.